cute rolling robot that follows you around, an alien supercar that you're never going to be able to buy, and tech for everything from your wrist to your lap. Hey, it must be CES. CES might stand for Consumer Electronics Show, but as someone on Twitter said to me, maybe the better title for 2020 is Concept Expo Show. That's because of all the cool things I saw in Las Vegas this year, a little less than half of them might never come out at all. The most egregious example of that is the Mercedes Vision Avatar. Mercedes actually flew me out to CES this year specifically to see this. But understand, this is what's known as a show car or a concept car. It's never coming to market, and that's not the point. The point is to provide a vessel that a manufacturer can use to explore futuristic concepts and, of course, push a marketing message. In this case, Mercedes wants everyone to know it's thinking about the future, naturally. The wheels let it crab walk sideways, the entire console is a display, and instead of a steering wheel and buttons, you control the car using a haptic hump and uh, air gestures with your hands. But more importantly, Mercedes seems to want everyone to know it's thinking about environmental impact. Hmm, wonder why. The car is named after the film Avatar. James Cameron was actually on stage here in Vegas to talk about it. And while the parallels to the message of that film are maybe as on the nose as the message itself, there are also more practical advancements, like organic battery technology made from recyclable materials, and I'm sure we'll see some of the cockpit interface concepts come to production cars in the coming years as well. Mostly, though, I'm just here for the scales. Car companies aren't the only ones getting in on the concept fun, though this next one does have automotive DNA. OnePlus was here showing off its Concept One smartphone. It's basically a redressed OnePlus 7 Pro with the same papaya leather McLaren uses in its cars. It's also got a new gold PVD coating and camera lenses that hide away when you're not using them. I don't think it's a big deal to see exposed camera lenses, but the science of how the company achieved it is cool. There's a special electrochromic glass placed over the camera array, glass that changes its opacity when an electric current is passed through it. Besides looks, there's one practical advantage here. The glass can act as an ND filter, which is a piece of camera gear that helps when you're shooting outside in harsh sunlight. And it's one of the remaining photo features that hasn't yet come over to smartphones in a big way, so that's really cool. OnePlus says it has no plans to release this phone but I wouldn't be surprised to see this EC Glass come to a future model. This footage is courtesy Android Central. Check out their full video on the phone to learn more. And to round out the list of things that might never get made, this is Bali, and it's meant to help out around the house while it rolls around. Samsung says it can communicate with your other appliances, so if Bali notices a mess on the floor, it can send your robot vacuum cleaner to come take care of it, or turn on the outside light if it hears you coming home. Honestly, all that stuff sounds way too far out to me. You'd need compatible tech and all that. But it's the social angle that interests me the most. Bali responds to voice commands. It has its own electric voice of sorts, and it can follow you around. Yes, like all the poor, dead, or dying social robots that came before it, Bali's usefulness is limited. It might never see the light of day. But if it does come to market, Having a company the size of Samsung behind it might ensure it doesn't meet the same sad fate as, yeah, Jibo. I mean, if Sony can make it work with Ibo, then why can't we have our own little BB-8 around the house, right? Okay, so what is coming to market from this circus? Well, Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Fold might look too futuristic to exist, but it is absolutely coming out later in the year. I covered this in depth in a dedicated video. Check out the channel for it, and if you missed it, please subscribe so you don't miss the full review. But what I didn't know when I made that video is that I would give it my best in show award. Look, I've said it a million times. I think foldable screens are the future. I bought a Galaxy Fold, and it's been my trade show phone this year. And the X1 Fold made me realize that that foldable future might be even more useful on PCs. Uh, oh, speaking of folding phones, though, TCL was on site with a prototype to demo. The company stressed to me that it won't be building this particular model, but I am expecting a foldable of some kind from TCL at some point. Stay tuned. 
We saw other more practical laptops here. Uh, Asus showcased a smaller version of that ZenBook Pro Duo I fell for back in the summer. LG brought its latest generation of Gram laptops. And they're just as durable and <laughs> impossibly lightweight as ever. And Samsung showcased the most exciting Chromebook I've seen in a while. The Chromebook Pixel looks so similar to the Google Pixel Book from 2017 that I'm basically just gonna call it a sequel. And like all great sequels, it packs some awesome improvements. The 4K OLED display, shockingly beautiful. The micro SD card slot, very useful. 10th generation Intel processor up to a terabyte of storage. And yeah, the red option is somehow even more striking in person. The problem? It's gonna be pricey. When it drops sometime in the first quarter, it'll start at $9.99. And finishing off with another familiar name, the Fossil Group was here with updates for almost all of its smartwatches. Some of these are just style upgrades, like the new colorways of Fossil Sport and new casing options on Hybrid HR. Others are genuinely new models, like the Skagen Falster 3, which updates one of the most beautiful smartwatches of 2018 with the new specs common to all Fossil Gen 5 smartwatches. There's also a new diesel on fade light. I cannot wait to get a hold of the transparent casing and band. And there's a new Gen 5 companion for the Carlisle called the Garrett. Uh, and yes, with the exception of the hybrid HR, these all run Google's Wear OS, for better or worse. I'm gonna to try to get a hold of some of these for a full review. Let me know in the comments which ones you'd most like to see me take for a test drive. Was there more to see at CES? God, so much. From the Westworld dinner to Impossible's new meatless pork to the future tech awards, it was an utter avalanche of tech and it was a lot of fun. If you wanna read more about it, check out the coverage from my friends at iMore and Windows Central. And if you wanna hear us talk about it for, I don't know, eight hours, listen to the Android Central podcast. I will link all of that in the description below. Disclosure, Mr. Mobile was flown to Las Vegas for CES by Mercedes, but the company had no editorial input into my coverage and it did not receive a copy in advance of publication. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you'd like to see more videos like this. Be sure to follow me on Instagram to see a lot more of the tech from the show that I didn't fit into this video and a lot of behind the scenes craziness as well. And stay tuned for the next big tech show coming just next month, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.